Our next speaker is Aisha Ahmed. She is a STEM enthusiast, a robot builder, a YouTuber, and she won uh, interna the International Sabbath Star Science Fair 2016. Her work for, bionic, uh, for her work in biotech, biotechnology, bionic technology, my mistake, sorry. Uh, she regularly performs open mic, being a two-time Poetry Slam winner in Abu Dhabi. Let's welcome Aisha Ahmed. Did this? Hello, good morning. Um, so I'd like to describe an event that fundamentally shift my mm -hmm. shifted my sense of purpose. So in 2009, my family and I visited the Nilgiri Mountains in Bangladesh. We came across a small community of small grocery stores, of people that lived in tin houses and schools. During our two-week stay over there, I came across a girl named Samia. Now, Samia and I had a lot in common. We both really liked to read. So when she showed me around her house, which was her tin home, I saw school books. And having seen the school before, school before I, I was slightly envious. How amazing is it to live in such beautiful mountains away from civilization, and yet still have access to food and education. So when I asked her about her school, her answer shocked me. She said that she didn't go to school. She explained that even though her school did provide morning classes, she didn't, she didn't go because she, she would come home in the afternoon and then go straight, straight to work and then come home in the evening. And by the time she came home, it was already nighttime. Now, that doesn't really seem like a huge problem, right? I mean, not to us in our air-conditioned homes and fueled cars, but she said that she couldn't go to school because she didn't have electricity to study at night. And that broke my heart because here I am, right in front of you, and I have everything, but you don't, and it's all because of electricity. So I thought to myself, what could I do to help you? Is there a way to provide free access to energy to those who cannot reach it? When I came back home to Abu Dhabi, I felt bestowed with a sense of purpose. During my research, I came across Nikola Tesla. Now, Nikola Tesla was a pioneer of wireless electricity. While doing more research, I realized that it is, not, it is not the source of energy that is the problem. We have many different sources of we have many different sources of renewable energy, like solar energy, tidal energy, etc. Especially solar and nuclear energy that have that has expanded that has expanded over recent years. For example, solar, solar cell efficiency has went up from 7.6 percent to 48.6 percent in the last decade. In a recent breakthrough in Germany, we have successfully used nuclear fusion to power a small section of Germany. And so that tells me that it is not the source of energy that is a problem. Rather, it is the propagation of energy that is the problem. How do we get that energy to people living in the outskirts? So, so um, power lines don't often reach the outskirts of cities. They're often centralized around cities. And when the power lines, which are propagated through wires, do reach outskirts, they do so in a really unreliable way and also in a really hazardous way. And so what could we do to replace that? And this is where Nikola Tesla comes in. He was a pioneer of wireless energy. So, Nikola Tesla came up with the concept of a Tesla coil in 1891. And the way a Tesla coil works is that you take one coil and then you put it into a magnetic field. And when you put that coil into a magnetic field, it induces a current. It induces a current in that, magnet, in that coil, and that induces a magnetic field. When you place a second coil in that magnetic field, the magnetic field sends the energy, the current, from the first coil to the second coil. And that further provides electricity. For example, 
This method is called induction, and this is how a wireless toothbrush works. Now, okay, that's cool. Like, induction, if, if it's so easy to provide wireless energy like that, why don't we just use induction on a large scale? Well, there are two main problems with that. The, the, problem with, the first problem with induction is that it only works on a really, really small scale. The coils have to be really close together. Once you separate the coils, the energy transmission ceases. I'm pretty sure most of you physics students know the inverse square law, that the energy, that the energy of the waves, electric waves, decreases um, with the inverse square of the distance from the source. The second problem, the second problem is that the energy transmission ceases. Um, so Nikola Tesla wanted to implement this on a large scale, and he thought to himself, how could I possibly implement this on the large scale if I can't separate the two coils? We need to have a distance between them in order to have long distance transmission. And he realized that I could use resonance in the Earth's ionosphere. Instead of using, instead of using a coil, a second coil, we could just use the Earth's ionosphere as the second coil. So resonance, so resonance is the tendency of an object to gain energy as the oscillations that pass through it match the object's vibrations, inherent vibrations. And the ionosphere is just a section of the Earth's atmosphere that contains ionized gases, which allow electricity to pass by it. So he thought that if he could get the perfect frequency, the resonant frequency, to, to, be, in the Earth's, to be in the Earth's ionosphere, that would allow that current to pass through that ionosphere. So just like once you match the resonance frequency of the ionosphere, that allows you to change the energy in the current to a usable form of energy. And since the ionosphere is around, surrounding our Earth, he thought that it would, al it would allow that energy in the current to be used in other devices on the Earth. But this didn't work out because he did not properly and practically test his idea. He did not realize that the ionosphere was far too weak to carry out, to carry out that idea. So in 2006, an MIT professor, the one on the left, um, the one on the right, showed that, showed that he thought that if we can't use the ionosphere, what method of propagation could we use? And he thought to himself, okay, they used electric waves initially, but that wasn't working. We can't propagate through the ionosphere, it's too weak. But what if we used magnetic fields? What if we used magnetic fields with the same principle of the previous idea? So he and his team did that. What they did was that they took a coil and they oscillated, they oscillated it at a really high frequency. And then they took another coil and they trained it to recognize that frequency so that it would couple the energy between them and it would cause that energy to be sent magnetically rather than, electri rather, than electri rather than electronically. So what they did was that they hung up two coils and the light bulb was induc inductionally co uh, connected, to, connected to the f power source and the other one was also connected to the power source. So what happened was that he found he found that um, at, a at a two meter distance, he found that the efficiency of power transmission to light the bulb was 45%. Even when he placed a wooden block between them, he found that the energy transmission was still the same. So it was much more efficient than electric waves. Magnetic waves are far more efficient than electric waves. When he, when he, when he um, decreased the distance between the two coils, he found that the efficiency rose to 93. Um, this project was called Y-tricity, and he spun this off into a, into a startup called by the same name, by the same name, Y-tricity. And, and since they use magnetic fields as opposed to electric fields, it has four implications. So as I mentioned before, when you use electric fields, you can't separate the two coils. But when you use magnetic fields, this actually allows you to change the orientation of the source and the receiver, and it also allows you to increase or decrease the distance between them. The second implication is that you, you can charge multiple devices from one source. Since we're inducing a magnetic field, as long as you place the objects 
close to the magnetic field or in the magnetic field, it automatically, it automatically gets charged. The third implication is that they don't necessarily have to be the same size. Um, if you have a large power source, your phone doesn't have to match the size equivalence of that power source. Rather, since you have the adaptability of being able to change the distance between them, you can make up for the size difference just by changing the, size by changing the distance between them. The fourth implication is that, so if we're talking about wireless energy on a global scale, the most important aspect that we need to talk about is how far can we take this energy. So what he found that he could use passive, object called, passive, passive objects called resonant repeaters. And what their job was basically to gather, to accumulate the magnetic field from the first power source and then send it off further to another resonant repeater and so far and so far. And this was one way to extend, to extend the, the propagation of the magnetic field. And this is currently being used in many different domains, from consumer electronics to, to medical applications. For example, you can wirelessly charge, um, charge uh, robots that, not robots, but machinery that is attached to your heart to keep it beating. You can also wirelessly charge um, hearing aids. They're also used in electric vehicles where you can charge, where you can charge uh, cars without actually having to orient them perfectly on a charging pad. Rather, you can just implement them in your garage, park it in, and that's how easy you can charge your hybrid car, for example. And while this idea is kind of modest compared to Tesla's idea of lighting the world with wireless electricity, it still shows that even though Tesla's idea did fall apart, we, they still managed to find another way to at least implement this idea on a small scale. And we have to keep in mind that we always start out small. In science, we always start out small. But that only shows us that we have so much farther to go. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited for the future of wireless energy. And I can't wait to help contribute to this ever-expanding field. And I hope that I managed to give you some insight onto what has happened. And I hope you feel as excited as I am. Tesla gave us a direction of wireless energy, and it is up to us to pave the path to make that a reality. And hopefully, hopefully that way I can help the many, many Samias around the world that don't have what we take, on a what we take granted for every day. Thank you.